stick insects, masters of camouflage, and... Welcome to the Insect Spotlight Project, a channel dedicated to shining a light on insects, spiders, and any other creepy crawlies that get left out of the ecologic spotlight. Today we are talking about the order Phasmatodia, also known as the stick insects or the stick bugs. This group also includes the leaf insects or leaf bugs. You'll sometimes hear this order also referred to as Phasmida. It means the same thing, it's just personal preference. And while they may not look it, this group is actually closely related to the mantids and the cockroaches and such. Stick insects are best known as masters of camouflage, because you can't eat what you can't see. When an organism tries to disguise itself in order to avoid predator detection, we refer to this as crypsis. Consequently, the phasmids are either long and thin to mimic sticks, or they'll be flat and broad to mimic leaves. Their name, Phasmatodia, actually is a nod to their incredible crypsis. Phasma means phantom or apparition, while eidos means form. So Phasmatodia means form of a phantom. Stick insects are also often wingless, and those that do have wings normally are pretty clumsy flyers. When wings are present, the forewings are thickened and leathery, like in cockroaches, grasshoppers, and mantids. We call these thickened leathery forewings tegmina. The wings are sometimes pretty hard to see, as they often fold them very close to the body in order to maintain that stick-like appearance. Though phasmids are normally brown and green to match their surroundings, many of them have very vibrant wings, which they can flash at predators in order to startle them. If you're able to actually find their face, you'll notice that they have pretty well-developed eyes, and all of them have chewing mouth parts, which are perfect for grinding up leaf foliage. Phasmids are hemimetabolous, which means they have an incomplete three-stage metamorphosis, from egg, to nymph, to adult. And the nymphs will look sort of like the adults, but they're always lacking wings. Though they sometimes lay their eggs in bark crevices or in stems, many phasmids will just drop their eggs down to the forest floor. In the night, these eggs will hatch out, and the little phasmids will make their way up the nearest trees to begin the cycle anew. A lot of stick insects can also reproduce parthenogenically, which means the female can create fully viable eggs without fertilization. However, reproducing sexually does still have the benefit of increased genetic diversity. In addition to looking like twigs, stick insects will also do their best to behave like twigs. They're great at standing still, but they'll also sometimes rock back and forth, which makes them look like a branch swaying in the wind. This is also to help their depth perception. Mantids do the same thing. However, crypsis is not their only defense. Many of them also use chemical defenses. When disturbed, they'll leak foul-smelling liquid from their leg joints and mouth in hopes that predators will abandon them in disgust. Even if they end up losing a leg or two, it's much better than being eaten. Phasmids can come in some incredible sizes. Phryganistria chinensis, discovered in 2014 in China, can grow up to two feet in length, making it the longest insect in the world. Before this, actually, the title was held by a different stick insect from Malaysia. Because of their size and relatively easy care, phasmids are a popular choice for insect owners. Just make sure if you get one, get it from a reputable seller, research proper care, and don't go releasing it outside. Their use in the pet trade is likely responsible for their establishment in some non-native regions. As we discussed before, many phasmids can reproduce asexually. They also will often just drop their eggs onto the forest floor, and they can be pretty hard to spot. So phasmid owners that dump the insect frass and debris outdoors will often get some eggs mixed in. In California, for example, Indian walking sticks can be readily found. They're not really a major pest. They sometimes cause some aesthetic damage to landscape plants, but again, not really a big deal. But their establishment is likely due to their use in the pet trade. So if you own a phasmid, it's best to throw out their droppings instead of dumping them outdoors, just in case you've got some eggs in the mix. And again, despite their occasional defoliation, overall phasmids are not really an insect you have to worry about. In fact, phasmids actually have some great benefits. Since many of the leaves they eat are high up in the canopy, they create openings for sunlight to reach the forest floor, creating opportunities for new plants to spring up. 
This also helps nutrient cycling, taking energy high up in the hard to reach canopy and fertilizing the forest floor below. And of course, they can sometimes be a tasty treat for predators, if you can even find them, and if you're unbothered by their chemical defenses. So how are we to conserve something that we can barely see? One of the most important things is the planting of native plants. Phasmids are herbivorous, and they need native trees in order to prosper. Oak and cherry are normally some great choices, but just make sure to double check what trees are native to your area. Leaf litter conservation is also important for stick insects. Since they drop their eggs directly onto the forest floor, if there's no debris or cover for them, these eggs stand a small chance at survival. Especially if it's just lawn grass that's regularly mowed or chemically treated. Sometimes it can be hard to care much about the things that we can't readily see, and this is one of the major hurdles with insect conservation. Because insects are small and often hidden away, we usually take them for granted. However, even when we can't see them, they're still there, and they need habitat and resources so they can keep doing all the good things that they do. And if you're lucky enough to spot some of these beautiful, stealthy insects, enjoy it, because I am notoriously bad at tracking these buggers down. Being hard to spot, plus spending most of your time high up in the canopy is a pretty tough combo. Thank you so much for listening, y'all, and please remember to like and subscribe if you enjoyed the content to keep up to date with future orders. And if you have any favorite species from this group or any fun phasmid facts that I didn't cover, please leave them in the comments below. I'll make sure to read them. Peace, everyone.